So, are all pedal boards created equal? I don't think so. When there is no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. So, as you guys know, I've been using Pedal Train forever. It's just been the go-to kind of pedal company, or pedal board company. And then recently, again, so late to the party, um, I found out about a company called Temple Audio. They do things a little bit differently, um, which we'll discuss in a sec. So I reached out to the guys over at Temple and I was like, dudes, I really love your product. I really, really want one. And the beautiful guys over at Temple sorted me out. And I'll now be a Temple artist, um, or Temple Audio artist. So my, my first purchase as an artist for the company is this and just again just the branding of this company is so cool um so i like the logo i like everything about them i really like what they do um so let's open this bad boy up and see what's inside as i don't have a knife i'm going to use an evertune allen key it seems to work surprisingly well <laughs> And you guys will see it before I will. Uh, well, maybe you won't, because it was underneath the camera. Just get it out. Do you know what? It's surprisingly light. So much lighter than the pedal train. Right, we'll talk about some of the other gear, but first up, let's just talk about what I love about this so much. So, these things in particular are why I love this company. So they have module holes mod mod section so you can put anything you want in there you can route it inside the pedal board jobs an absolute good one everything now super neat and nice and because of the modular nature of it you can put stuff on the bottom and you can put stuff on the top which basically gives you double the real estate of a normal pedal board which is so much better even the support strut has um, the mountain um, capabilities on it, so you could put your power supply in there and you can stick all of your gubbins on there. Brilliant job. Also, as well, as you know, I'm a sucker for red and black. It's the livery of kings. Um, so that is it. So if you're interested in the size, what this is, is the Duo 34. So 34 inches wide and uh, 12 and a half inches deep, I think, just on about 12 and a half inch, which is about perfect for a Helix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to store my Helix on this bad boy, which will most probably take up the majority of it. Then I'm going to have my wah and I'm going to have my um, G70 switcher. Then underneath, I am going to have my um, G4 wireless, currently my XSW Sennheiser wireless. I'm going to have a, a Sennheiser G4 wireless in there, which is for my in-ears, so I can rock everything off this. Then I'm going to have a power supply. Then I'm going to have a... Have a um, I don't know, I could have like Legos or something. I don't, I don't know. There's a lot of room under there to store stuff. Uh, now the issue we've got is the little nuts that come through this hole obviously they're quite chunky so you can't put anything on top of those so i'm gonna to have to be quite selective in how i mount the board but it's a great idea and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to run a power supply into there i'm going to run xlr two xlr in two xlr out for my stereo feed into my in-ears and my stereo feed back to my in-ears so stereo out from my guitar rig, stereo back in from my in ears. Then I've got a spare one, which I don't know what I'm going to do with that one. And then I've got the same again on the other side, so I could run a whole new bunch of IO there as well. This is really, really cool. Let's look at the other goodies I've received from Temple Audio. Right, so we have a box, um, proudly made in Canada. Um, as you know, if you've watched this channel before, I'm a sucker for things that are Apple-like. 
and this this company seemed to just have a really high quality ethos. So let's see what this is. Okay, so stickers. Oh, actually, it wasn't that hard. I just needed to man up. So this is my IEC unit. So. Oh, Temple, well done. I like your style. Okay, so this is... Oh, you get a screwdriver as well. And you get a Temple... Um, Temple branded screwdriver. It ain't just like a cheap screwy. So, use the screwdriver to pierce the bag. That's really cool. Oh, nice one, man. This is, this is good, Temple. I like what you've done there. Even though it's technically upside down. Very, very cool. Okay, so you get a nice screwdriver with it. Not that I know what a nice screwdriver is. I'm a musician. Um, then you get this thing, which is, as far as I'm concerned, if you're buying one of these boards, this is a necessity. So what I was talking to you earlier, this fits into one of those module bays, and it has a really lovely on-off switch. So for this, if, if I'm running the G70s, don't have an on-off switch. Well, they do, but it's, it's horrible. Um, the Tonex doesn't have an on-off switch, which is crazy in this day and age. Don't need one. Don't need one anymore. Temple have sorted me out. So this runs under the board. It's got a female, i.e. C. So that lives under the board. That feeds inside the board. Then I run an IEC out of that into whatever I needed to power, whether it be a power supply or whether it be the Helix or whatever. So then all I do is I plug one power cable into that, turn it on, everything on the board turns on. When I need everything off, everything on the board goes off. It's brilliant because I'm, I'm really, really into it feeling like the board was a one one product rather than a bunch of products sell taped or glued to a thing so that's really really cool okay what you don't get is screws with that unit so I'm, I'm hoping that you do get screws with it somewhere let's continue there was these i'm assuming that these are the screws for that for that thing Let's hope, because otherwise I'm going to have to go to like a DIY store and fuck that for Game of Soldiers. Again, I'm a musician, man. I can't do DIY. Next bag of lovelies is um, are these mountain... And, and this is this is the deal. This is why you would go for a system like this. So I asked uh, Cass over at Temple Audio... Look, dude, I've got all of this gear. How many do you think I would need? And he just went, this many, Glover? So I was like, okay, well, I believe in you, so just send me that many. So I actually ended up with 14. Um, now, I'm down with that because this guy seems to know what he's talking about. It's his company after all. So really great branded. It just Everything's just so quality. And then they've got these little mountain screws, and then you basically clip that onto your board, and then you screw that in from the other side. That locks into place, and now your pedal is stuck to wherever it needs to be. It's got these little four nipples. They line up with the holes in the board, so there's. it's just once it's on, it's not going anywhere. It's absolutely solid. So I've got 14 mediums. Let's hope that that's enough. If it's too much, it just means that I have to get some more pedals. And that ain't a bad problem either. Okay, so now I've got the power coming into the board. Pardon me. Um, I've got my pads, so I'm, th I'm thinking mediums. I mostly have four on the Helix, couple on the Tone X, couple on the Wah, couple on the G4. So what's that now? Four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, about ten, and then I've got two for the in ear monitoring system, and maybe two for the power supply. Which, weirdly enough, I think I'm going to throw this speaker on it. So, this is a Lakato. I'm going to do a review of this separately, but 
It's cheap, man, and it has 500 milliamp, 12 volt, which will power my in-ear rig. Nothing else will power my in-ear rig. It's ridiculous. Plus, also the G70 requires a 9 volt, 500 milliamp, and so does the Tonex. So this bad boy should do it all. We shall see, and that's gonna live on that um, on that center that center rig. And then also what I asked for, um, and again, really, really, really well presented, um, was some RGB because I'm a little bit Liberace like that. So I was thinking, right, well, I'll get, I'll just get some RGBs. What I realised is that RGBs are noisy, especially if you buy cheap ones. So what I said to Cass was, look Cass, I'm down with that mate. Can I please have one of your own RGB LED strips? And he said, of course man, because that's the way to do it. So basically that's gonna live inside the the um, the back of the at the back of the pedal. It's cut to length, you order it to the, the um, for the, the 34. And it has a pedal power. And I've heard, but and I'm, I'm assuming this is fr from the horse's mouth, it is shielded to work with audio right next to it, um, audio equipment right next to it. So whereas you might think to yourself, oh, well, it's quite expensive, that, because I think they work out about 50 quid or something. You might think, well, that's a lot of money for what is essentially a meter of LED strip. I can get one of them off Amazon or Etsy for about seven quid. You might, but I, I guarantee you, as soon as you turn it on, your amp's gonna go boop, and then you're gonna have to buy a 70 quid noise gate. So don't waste your money, get an LED strip that is designed for audio equipment. Also, you get this very, very neat um, branded remote control, and I like that. I like that a lot. Um, and the sealed, the quality, the, they're all sealed and everything in plastic. Um, am I going to be able to get that out? With my shit teeth. I am. I feel like the Hulk. I'm a winner. I'm a winner today. Now, there's loads of people talking about the Schmidt pedal boards. Everyone's raving about things. Really expensive pedal boards. Now, these aren't cheap, don't get me wrong, but they're not the most expensive. And I have now a plethora of colour options for my board. Obviously, it's going to be red because I'm into Darth Vader, but really, really good. So what I most probably will do is I'll figure out some way of sticking that to the board. So I've got control of the board on the board, and then you get a little... Um, your things and how, where's the best place to mount it. Also, it basically says claim, it claims to mount it on the front of the pedal board. Now, I would have mounted it on the back. Yeah. So, yeah, now I know that I would have done it wrong. Okay, so I'm going to mount that on the front as it stipulates because I'm sure they know what they're talking about. Brill. Okay, so I'm going to go away and have a good old play with all of this, but... Guys, for a, a relatively big, and this is a big board, for a relatively big board, really, really light. I love this, like, um, wrought iron. It's it's a textured metal rather than just, like, plastic handles or whatever. All metal, all completely solid. Really, really lightweight. Really lightweight. So, yeah, the, the Schmitz and all of the, these really fancy... Um, Boutique looking pedal boards are great, I suppose, if you want to spend a couple of grand on a pedal board. But I don't want to worry about my pedal board as much as I do my pedals. If this takes a couple of hits, it takes a couple of hits, it's just the way it is. If I had a five grand pedal board, I'd be having it in a suitcase that cost me 800 quid. Uh, what's the point? It's a pedal board. It needs to be road savvy. So this guy is the guy, I think. So I'm really, really proud to be. Um, to be working with these guys. 
Can't wait to build this up. That's another video coming soon. Also as well, there's been complaints about how you would stick XLR cables through here because obviously it's too small. And even big, um, uh, the IC cables, how you fit them through there. So I think I've got a bit of a tip for that with a bit of a Dremel. I think I'm also gonna cut under here. So I've now got a, a way I can just filter them all through here and then run them, maybe run them over the top of the board to get them to where they need to be. Same here, if I needed an XLR coming the other way, I can cut under this and then come in, because these will screw off, and then come in from the, the side rather than cutting out anything on the actual board. Come in from the side and then maybe root them over the top, which will be super neat. Yeah, looking forward to it. Right guys, so that is it. That is the unboxing of my new Temple Audio rig, um, of which there will be many, I'm sure, because I want a slightly smaller rig as well. I don't think I'll be going any bigger than that. That will fit a Helix and everything I need to fit on. Tonex, Wawa, and um, me, me G70 wireless, and my G4 in-ear system. That should all fit on there, as well as this the Lakato power supply, which hopefully I will be bringing a video of that soon too. And that's it. New gear, new year, I suppose. Um, keep in touch, keep it here. There's a lot of videos coming out about what modelers I'm using and why I'm using them. And also we've got a, a breadth of modelers now, so it's like, okay, let's discuss modelers for a little bit. But that's coming in the next video. Um, and we'll see you there. I'll see you in the next one. So take care, guys. And remember to check out Temple Audio if you're looking for a new board in your life. And I'll see you soon. Take it easy. Bye-bye.